Welcome back to Drum Ambition. In the last video, we looked at some more eighth note grooves and hopefully by now you're starting to feel comfortable with these. And if you are, we're ready to start drum fills. Now, drum fills are when we use the snare drum and our tom-toms to create patterns. Now, you'll see where we use them in the video. They're normally used at what we call transitional points in music. Now, for example, if we're passing from a verse to a chorus or a chorus to a verse, those areas could be called transitions and they're good points to mark with drum fills. So, as always, I'm going to walk you through the process. We're going to try some basic eighth note drum fills today. There is a downloadable PDF file to go with this, and as always, you're going to see the notation on the screen as well. So, let's relax and have some fun, and let's go through to the studio. So, as I mentioned, we're now going to start by playing some eighth note drum fills. Now, we're going to play every eighth note in all five examples here. So, you're always going to play one and two and three and four and it's just that we're going to mix it up a little bit and take it around the toms at, at times but to start with we're going to stay on the snare drum so our first drum fill as you can see on the notation in front of you the snare's played every eighth note now remember you're going to play one two three four on your right hand and you're going to play the ands on your left hand now this is something that's covered at length in our music notation video so i do suggest that you check those out as well so fill in number one nice and slow three and four and one and two and three and four and so remember to count out loud and keep it slow. Now we're gonna add something here. At the end of this drum fill, I'm gonna hit a crash as well. And then I'm gonna just dampen it after I hit it as well so it doesn't continue to ring. So, three and four and one and two and three and four and crash. Now, I also hit the bass drum at the same time there is the crash. Now I'm going to talk about exactly where we're placing that crash and that bass drum in a few minutes. But I wanted to touch on just for a few moments how we're hitting this crash cymbal because there's definitely a good way and a bad way to play crashes. Now you may have noticed that when I played that crash, I hit it from right to left. Now we call that a glancing movement and it looks like this. And from the other side, it looks like this. And if you do that, you're going to do a couple of things. You're going to prolong the life of your cymbals because you're taking all the pressure off the cymbal when you hit it like that. And it's going to let the cymbals sing as well. So we definitely want to try and hit our crash cymbals like that. Now, what we definitely do not want to do is take your stick and go directly down on the cymbal like that. Two things are happening there. Number one, you're taking all the pressure up your arm there, and eventually that's going to hurt. You can also break your equipment. Your sticks will break. If your technique needs a little bit of work, you're going to find you're breaking sticks regularly. Um, you could also break the cymbal as well. When you go directly down like that, the cymbal's taking all the pressure, uh, and they will crack. I mean, even the most heaviest and thickest cymbals are just sheet metal at the end of the day, and, and they can crack, so be careful of that. So, let's play that drum fill, and I'm going to add three bars of time ahead of it so we can put it into context, and it looks and sounds like this. Three and four and one. Two. Three. Now, just as a demonstration, if we go faster, it's going to look like this. One, two, three, four. Again, we're going to keep it slow to start off with, though. So let's look at another couple of examples. If we take that exact drum feel, so eighth notes with the both hands, numbers on the right, ands on the left. Let's orchestrate that drum fill now. Now, what we mean by that when we talk about orchestration is when we're playing around the drums. So let's keep it nice and straightforward to start with. We're going to play, as you can see on the screen, one and on the snare drum, two and on the high tom, three and 
on the middle tom and four and on the low tom. If we play the crash at the end as well, it's going to sound like this. Three and four and one and two and three and four and crash. So again, we'll put three bars of time with that and it's going to sound like this. Three and four and one. Two. Three. One and two and three and four and crash. So let's try some different orchestrations as well after you've practiced that a few times and you're very comfortable with it. We're now going to put the snare on the one and. We'll put the high tom on the two and. We'll go back to the snare for the three and and then we'll go across to the floor tom on the four and. So the, the fill by itself will look like this. Three and four and one and two and three and four and crash. So again with three bars of time. One and two and three and four and one. Okay, so there's three different examples for you there now. Let's do another one. Let's start on the snare drum. As you can see from the music, we're going to play one and two and on the snare drum. And then we're going to go straight across to the floor tom for the three and four and. We'll play the crash at the end as always. Looks like this. Three and four and one and two and three and four and crash. So again, with three bars of time, it sounds like this. Three and four and one. Two. Three. And then after you've practiced those a bit more, let's try one more. We're going to actually start on the floor tom this time on beat one. And then we'll go and two and on the snare drum, which you'll remember is left, right, left. And then we're going to go three and on the high tom and four and on the middle tom. And it looks like this. Three and four and one and two and three and four and crash. So let's just put that together with three bars of time just to finish off. Three and four and one. Two. Three. Now, just something to explain here. When I play this crash cymbal or this crash cymbal at the end of the drum fill, it's really important to understand that that is on the one of the next bar. So we've already counted one and two and three and four and one. Now we're going to elaborate on that a little bit more in the next video, but I just wanted to mention that to start with. So common mistakes that people make, firstly, sticking. Now, what do we mean when we talk about sticking? Well, quite simply, we're talking about which hand plays which note, which notes are played by the right hand, which notes are played by the left hand. And there are concepts that go with this, and we do talk about them at length in our music notation videos, so do check them out. So for now, just remember that if you're starting a drum fill on the one, that needs to be your right hand. The numbers one, two, three, four are played with your right hand and the ands are played with the left hand. So do you watch out for that. And the reason for that is it builds control and control is just is so important. Without it, we really have nothing on the drum set. And out of control, so many things open up. Musicality, speed, power, so many things come from control and that comes from sticking. So it's worth checking out those videos.
Another important benefit of sticking is that we know which hand is going to hit the crash cymbal when we come out of a fill. So you've probably experienced that for yourself where you've played a drum fill and you've got a little bit lost in, inside the fill because you're not really thinking about sticking and then all of a sudden you don't know whether you're going to play the crash on the right or left hand. Well, sticking solves that problem for you. So again, it really is worth looking at those music notation videos on that. Another common problem is people speeding up into the drum fill. Now, be really careful about this. The drum fill has to be exactly the same speed as your time. So I hear uh, a lot of people speed up on the fill. It sounds like this. I'll just play one bar at a time, then I'll go into a, a, a fill that's a little too fast so I can give you an example. Three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and crash. So that's almost double the speed of, of the time. So it's important that if the time is one and two and three and so forth, then the fill is one and two and three. It's all continuous. So be very, very careful about that. OK, we're going to go back into the control room and we'll talk about some more practice ideas. And uh, then we'll come back. And in our next video, we'll talk a little bit more about how we develop these fills a bit more. So I hope you found that video interesting and informative. And now with your eighth note grooves and your eighth note fills, you should start to feel all of this coming together. It's a good point to get to. And what would be a good idea is if you take some of the eighth note grooves that you've learned from the previous couple of videos and combine those with some of the drum fills you've just learned. Also, it's a good idea to try your own drum fills. Just make sure that you start with your right hand when you do that, right, left, right, left, right, left, just like we talked about in the video, and then just experiment. Some of your drum fills will sound good, some will sound not so good, but it's all just about having fun and seeing what works and what doesn't. In the next video, I'll give you some more options for eighth note fills by adding the eighth note rest. And then in the meantime, if you have any questions, you can email me, support at drumambition.com. And as always, thank you for checking in and thank you for using Drum Ambition.